Good evening, I'm Amber Worthy. And I'm Angela Mori, and thanks for joining us for News 12 at 11. A suspect wanted for a Chattanooga shooting is now on the TBI's top 10 most wanted list. Dominique Collins is wanted for attempted first degree murder and other charges in an April 13th shooting. He was last seen in a gold colored Jeep. He should be considered armed and dangerous. If you have any information on him, contact the TBI. There is a reward of up to $2,500 for information leading to his arrest. And a Bradley Central High School student is facing a disorderly conduct charge after a gun was found on campus. It happened on Thursday. The sheriff's office says a BB gun was discovered inside that student's backpack. And a grieving family gathered, a grieving community gathered to remember victims of a mass shooting at Santa Fe High School after students were allowed to return to campus to gather their belongings left behind in the chaos. A 17 year old suspect who is charged with shooting 20 people, killing 10, told police he let some students live so they could tell his story. Courtney Zabowski is in Santa Fe with the latest. A grieving community gathered to remember victims of the mass shooting at Santa Fe High School. Earlier, students were allowed back to campus to gather the belongings left behind in the chaos. These sophomores were in class when a fellow student opened fire. I felt like my heart dropped to the floor, like in my chest. Like, I was like, oh my God, it's not a joke. Ten people died in the massacre, and another 13 were wounded, including substitute gym teacher Flo Rice. She was shot in the leg and played dead until officers arrived. Investigators say the suspect, 17-year-old Demetrius Pogorchis, confessed to the crime. Are you requesting consideration for a court-appointed attorney? Yes, sir. Nicholas Pale is one of his attorneys. This is a very young uh, kid. He's uh, you know, in very trying circumstances. To say that he's doing well uh, surely wouldn't be accurate right now. Sophomore Gavin Hawk played football with Pogorchis. He was a weird kid sometimes, but... We all loved him. He was just another one of the guys. Investigators say the suspect exchanged gunfire with law enforcement before he surrendered. He left behind homemade bombs, but officials say they were harmless. Santa Fe's mayor-elect says his immediate goal is to comfort the victims' families. We need to unite as one during this tragedy. We are hurt, but not broken. The school district's police chief says his officers did exactly what they'd been trained for, running into the school immediately to face the shooter. Courtney Zabowski, CBS News, Santa Fe, Texas. And Santa Fe High School will be closed Monday and Tuesday. Coming up in sports, I have a look at how a pro football player is helping those affected by this tragedy. And it's Armed Forces Day, and a changing of the flags took place yesterday in downtown Chattanooga. It's all a part of the Veterans Bridge Flag Initiative to always honor those who bravely serve our country. Those flags are up for six months and switched twice a year around Veterans Day and Armed Forces Day. Retired dentist Jim Kimball was a platoon leader in Vietnam. Well, it's uh, very nice. Uh, for them to do this, and my daughters were the ones that uh, made the donation, so it could be done, and I appreciate what they did. Anyone who wants to honor a serviceman or woman can do so by donating the cost of a flag, which is $75. All you have to do is call 311 to do so, and they all, but they are already sold out through next November. Well, it only seems fitting that the scenic city would host the Ironman 70.3 once again with such great sights for all the athletes. And through the enduring the swim, bike, and run race starting on Sunday, it's not over for the scenic city after that. In fact, it only gets better. Dorothy, Dorothy Sherman has a preview of the event. It only seems fitting with the Tennessee River, mountainous scenes, and an outdoor spirit that Chattanooga would host Ironman events, but that relationship is taking a step further. We are now the first community to host four Ironman events in a year. We, we have inked a new five-year contract to continue going with Ironman. 
Ironman events draw out thousands of pro athletes and participants to the scenic city, and this weekend is no different. At least 3,100 participants are signed up to take on the 70.3 mile swim, bike, and run. Athletes old and young, and athletes who are completing with a purpose. About two and a half years ago, I weighed uh, almost 500 pounds. Marcus Cook was motivated by his business partner who died of cancer. He wanted Cook to choose to get healthy, so Cook did just that. He had gastric bypass surgery and started walking 20 minutes a day. That 20 minutes a day turned to being able to run between a telephone pole and a telephone pole. And then it was like, hey, uh, can you do a, what do you want to do? And so I just got a goal and I got something that I never thought I could do. I was like, I'm going to do a triathlon. The Houston resident is now a two time full Ironman, and Sunday will make his fourth half Ironman. He tells me he hopes to inspire others through his own actions. I tell people all the time, hey, use my finish line for your starting line. You know, use what I'm doing when I come across the line and go, you know what, if that guy can do it, surely I can do it. The half Iron Man in Chattanooga will be a first for Cook, like many others. And with more events in the scenic city, it might not be his last. And dozens of volunteers helped make pillowcases for a national organization, Ryan's Cases for Smiles. Today's event was at the Creative Discovery Museum. It was created to help with some of the sometimes terrifying hospital experiences that both children and their families endure. Ryan's Cases for Smiles helps with the stress and emotional impact of illness by giving them whimsical pillowcases for the children to boost their emotional their emotions while they're enduring these treatments. They also provide resources and tools to help the families better understand and cope with the entire experience. My bag and when it's delivered it actually has a card with a link to our website that has resources for the children, for the family, for the parents, for the siblings because a cancer is not just a child's battle, it's an entire family's battle. Their goal was 100 cases today. The volunteers were of all ages. Many got to sew for the very first time. And a Bradley Central High School student received a surprise guest at his graduation this morning. Sergeant Dakota Garrett wasn't supposed to make it back from his deployment in time for his brother Nakoma's graduation. But when he did, the smile on Nakoma's face when they locked eyes will just warm your heart. Uh, a little bit shocked because, uh, I don't know, I haven't seen him a little bit. Told myself I wasn't going to cry and then turned around and started crying and then a feel of relief and joy that he's here. He told us we could FaceTime him, but the reception may be horrible, but he would still try it. So we figured we had like five phones to make a go for it. So. Is this better? Yeah, way better than FaceTime. Your FaceTime. <laughs> Oh my goodness, three hugs and a few tears later, he was able to welcome home his big brother, Dakota.